Hey guys, I'm Maria here with me. Um, she's now in Kuala Lumpur as the social media specialist for the biggest wellness brand online, which is Mind Valley. She's also worked for Google, so she's worked both in Europe and now here in Asia. So Maria, tell us more something about yourself. Hi everyone. So I started my career as a social media specialist because I was fascinated with the field and it was really new and I saw potential in it. And I continued until now. It's been four years that I've been doing social media. And the field is never boring. It's always changing. There's so much to learn and grow. That's why it fascinates me big time. Cool. Um, so tell us more. Uh, what's your role like as a social media specialist? So basically, I'm responsible for certain platforms, and uh, I'm a platforms owner. So mm -hmm. right now, I'm specializing in YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I did Instagram and Facebook before. Day-to-day mm -hmm. um, -day life is coming up with in communications meeting, this, deciding what kind of message goes out on social media platforms, creating social media calendars, strategies, uh, thinking what's the best way to promote a new product, what are the new innovative trending things happening in the market, um, and actually analyzing the data, working with the traffic team, content marketing team, video team uh, to create the best viral content out there and nail some formulas and dig into the numbers and repeat the results. Cool, cool. That's uh, an amazing job. Um... So right now, um, what do you see uh, is the latest uh, trend in the social media world? What, what do you see is the thing that we should uh, leverage on? I think currently LinkedIn is booming. Um, it's really the platform where you can really grow easily uh, without too much effort. And the long form posts and videos are performing outrageously. And advertising is still cheap on LinkedIn because not everyone jumped in yet and it's the best platform for b2b businesses um so i think there's a lot of opportunity on linkedin right now yes yes cool i i strongly agree uh linkedin certainly has the best organic reach when it comes to online uh compared to facebook or instagram where pay is a more, more uh, stronger and google as of, of course pay um so tell us about your experience uh working at google as well you were um consultant at Google? Uh, I was account strategist, so I was responsible for Lithuania's marketing. Lithuania's market. Um, so I was creating digital marketing strategies for biggest agencies and direct clients in Lithuania, mm -hmm. Dublin, but my clients were in Lithuania. Uh, it was really exciting time. Um, work managing a portfolio of 100 clients uh, in every different industry. Um, Everyone has a different product or service. Uh, I've learned a lot, um, time management skills, Google AdWords, uh, working with directly with clients. Um, it was definitely a ph phenomenal experience. Cool. Um, being an expert in Google AdWords, um, what do you say are the common mistakes that um, small medium enterprise makes when they get into uh, Google AdWords or any common mistakes that normally any any organization makes? So it has a lot to do with their way they optimize their campaigns. Uh, people normally don't dig, dive deep into it. There's a lot of customization that is available for people mm -hmm. and the platform is always changing. There's a lot, always a lot of new things that are available that help to optimize their campaign, but like sometimes people uh, don't invest enough time in it because everyone's busy and some people don't don't do it as their full-time job. So I think optimization of the campaign itself and just knowing your goals, being straight with your goals, what do you actually want to achieve with your campaign is something that some people want everything to be achieved with one campaign and they, they don't separate them accordingly to the goals. Nice, nice, nice stuff. So since um, I looked at your profile, you worked in the Netherlands, you worked in Dublin, and you worked in Asia. So what's the differences with working in two entirely different cultures and continents, actually? So I was exposed to international experience since I was 16 because I went to international school. So I'm 
I'm used to being surrounded always with international people, people from all over the world. And that's the environments I see myself growing into. And to be honest, I don't think I had a culture shock coming to Asia. I was just amazed how amazing it was. And I just took it all in as a good experience. I do think I had a reverse culture shock though when I moved to Dublin um, because I missed Asia. Um, so it was actually a really interesting phenomenon like that it happened, not the culture shock moving to Asia, but the culture shock moving back to yeah. Europe. Yeah, the cold weather, I, I, I couldn't take it. Uh, I got used to the everyday sun Funny, yeah. weather. Yeah, and uh, I feel people just happier in Asia. Really? And I think, yeah, I think it's contagious. And um, yeah. Nice, nice. What, what do you like about working here in in Kuala Lumpur, because you've been in Kuala Lumpur almost like four years now. Yes, yes. Um, I really like that um, there's a big expat community okay. in Kuala Lumpur. And uh, peop in the Mine Valley, the company I'm in, people are really following the trends and the new opportunities, mm -hmm. the uh, cutting edge technology and um, everything is very advanced. So, because our market is America. So that means that um, we really tailor our digital marketing towards that audience and we have to be on point with all the newest trends in the market. And um, that, that leaves me <clears throat> very excited um, to always learn and grow. So it's a really stimulating environment. Um, that's why I really enjoy it. Nice. Uh, Mind Valley, uh, for, for my audience, Mind Valley is one of the biggest brands uh, in terms of content for wellness, content for personal development, um, online, where they sell a lot of digital courses as well as a, a lot of other products. Um, so, what can you tell us is the sort of the um, strategy or to success for Mind, Mind Valley's uh, social media and digital presence? Uh, like maybe a few tips that Mind Valley has has uh, applied so one thing we did we nailed down the formal for, formula for viral video mm -hmm. uh, so our videos normally generate on Facebook around a million views uh, and we produce them every day um, and the formula basically was we nailed down the thumbnail because the first thing you have to do is just get people stop scrolling through the feed so we follow the best practices for the thumbnail, uh, the format of the video, you add the subtitles because most of the people watch it without sound. Mm -hmm. um, then you just, it's a two, around two minute video um, that you wanna produce because people don't stay as long as on YouTube, on Facebook. Um, another thing that you really wanna do, is the, the key in the end is content. So you really, you don't want to bore people with an hour presentation when actually the only good thing was two minutes of a conversation. So you really nail down to it. You bring out the subtitles, the big text on the screen, you show the face, um, and you have a good end slide that encourages people to follow you or comment um, on the video. So that really worked very well for us for growing social media. Uh, our Facebook page uh, to be precise. Yeah, what I see from your paid uh, content as well as um, some of the other content online, uh, because Facebook essentially is a feed media, so you need to capture the attention before you pull them out for the long form content. Um, I see a trend of micro content. That means like if you have a keynote, uh, you pull out just three minutes or one minute of the best parts of the keynote as attention grabbing um, content for Facebook. And uh, you get the best chance of it just to grab people's attention and to give them the information they want. And if they subsequently want to subscribe to the online training course or the long uh, keynote, that's up to them. So what are your thoughts on the, the creating micro content? So you mean micro content shorter than the three minute video yeah, or? 
Uh, can be the three minute video. Yeah. Yeah. So this is really like a lead magnet. Like you just really capture and the attention of the people and you get them interested and then you offer them a, an opportunity to see more of that. So it's really what makes our page grow and it's essential for your marketing social media strategy. Nice. Um, one of the achievements that you uh, told me that you achieved for Mind Valley is that um, you grew their channel to um, over 100,000 subscribers. Is that right? Actually, recently it grew by 235,000. Huh. So um, yeah. tell, tell me what, what are sort of a few um, things that you, you've, you've done to achieve the growth in subscribers. So the important thing is to dive deep into the platform and really focus on it because we had a channel for four years and it was almost not growing at all. A really stagnant growth. Um, but once we focused on the platform, I took ownership of that. Um, it really boomed. So the important thing here is not to see YouTube as a content library, but as a distribution channel. So it's not just a place where you upload your videos that you use on your pages. It's actually something that people look forward to and they spend a lot of time on this platform. So utilize it, use it as a people of commun community of people on that platform. Um, so you have to create a cadence. You have to totally master your thumbnails. It's super important. Certain companies have meetings for YouTube thumbnails. It's that crucial because you want to increase click-through rates. And um, in the end, it's really important the watch time, the metric that you should really follow, uh, duration, how long people watch your video because this platform is generally um, acceptable of videos of 10 minutes and more, 10 to 13 minutes, 10 to 13 minutes is the best practice because the longer people watch your video, the higher you have chances to appear on the higher end and optimize for YouTube tags. So there's a few tools like vidIQ use and follow what your um, competitors are putting as their tags and look what suggested videos tags are. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do around YouTube. It's, it's definitely a platform um, that people are focusing on today. Uh, people spend more and more time on this platform. So there's a lot of potential because the value per lead from this platform is really high because the leads are very warm because people spend a lot of time watching your content. It's like free advertising. Like organically, we grew that much. Yeah. A lot of the best uh, YouTube content creators tell, tell me that they don't spend any paid advertising on YouTube. And uh, they also, uh, like what you said, you, spend, you have meetings for YouTube thumbnails. That means uh, because you don't want to spend like two hours creating a video and then only 10 minutes with the thumbnail because that's what's going to get you the traction. Um, yeah, interesting Correct. stuff when it comes to the content and what I've seen on YouTube for for my valley, it's, uh, it's uh, pretty good. Um, do you, um, what other social media channels do you, um, do you manage for, for my valley? Uh, YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I used to manage Facebook and Instagram. Oh, okay. Um, what, so what's I'm the... focused a lot, focused a lot right now on growing. And like Yanni, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the founders, um, uh, presence, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So what, what is, um, do you have a growth strategy for, for Twitter? So Twitter has not been our main focus so far because other platforms are really out, outgrowing Twitter. Um, however, we just started working on it recently and we're looking into it. It's because the platform is very different. Okay. So basically the platform is conversation platform. So it's more about when people mention you, it's more engaging into conversation, creating a community feeling, like make sure that people feel like you listen to them. Um, it's a different game than Facebook. Uh, it's a completely different game than YouTube. Um, we're starting to produce videos specifically for Twitter. Um, we're also uh, planning to um, 
utilize more the hashtag game. Um, that's been the focus areas on Twitter. Nice. Um, when, when I look at uh, social media strategy, one of the brands that I will look for examples is actually Mind Valley. So I'll see what you guys are doing. Oh, wow. But, yeah, that's quite <laughs> the greatest trend. That's, uh, you, uh, but do you follow any social media channels and see, see what, what they do or any, any good um, role models out there? So my number, my go-to place for inspiration um, for new trends is my hero, Gajuk. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I always look what he's up to. Uh, definitely follow his advice. Um, and I just look how he does his content, like what are the new things that are happening. Um, he's always, I think, the first one in the market to utilize all the new opportunities. Uh, that for sure. Another good practice is always to do a competitor analysis. So I, I've done that for Mind Valley. Um, basically, looked into every similar company uh, in the industry and see how what format they are using, how often they post, what is their growth level. Um, so yeah, um, there's a lot out there, and it, it's always healthy to follow other people what they're doing so. yep yep uh, Gary V is, is great um, you can see how he puts out content on Instagram stories on Facebook on yeah. YouTube uh, it's very engaging and uh, it because he has uh, he his content is not so much for entertainment value so it's a very good model because he gives a lot of business advice and personal development advice so um, the way he distributes content is quite interesting uh, he goes sort of like a more like an influencer, uh, the way he distributes content, but the content that he gives has a lot of value. Um, yeah, I do follow Gary, Gary Rayner chat as well. Um, as uh, for, your, for yourself, do you um, try to grow your personal brand in any other way? And uh, do, you, do you do your own personal brand growth? So I had my own brand. I had my own company, so I, I was focusing on that. And growing that, it meant that I have to become a persona as well because I was the face of the brand. Tell, tell um, us more about your, your personal brand, Spark, right? Yeah, Spark. So I had an e-commerce lingerie brand um, that was ethically produced in Lithuania. I managed it while living in Malaysia and in Europe. Um, so we had quite a big team, 10 people. Um, and then, um, we tried to run, um, crowdfunding campaign for it. And so I had to, I was very active on social media at that point. Um, and we got a lot of attraction. We would get a couple of thousand people on the website a day, uh, organically. Um, yep. Nice. Uh, so what, what are the ways that you use to grow your personal brand? Was it mainly Instagram and uh, Facebook and your, your own connections? How was it? It's mostly, uh, I attend a lot of networking events. Oh. So I, it's a lot of face-to-face meetings. Um, another thing is I went live on Facebook and Instagram all the time uh, because it was the highest engaging type of format. And you actually engage into conversation. You are able to provide more value, and the algorithms prefer that type of format, so they boost it up. Um, so that was really uh, the most successful one. Like when I would do photo shoots, I would go live. People would interact, share, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, cool, cool. Any um, tips you can give uh, my audience in terms of Instagram growth? For Instagram growth. Uh, right now, the important thing on Instagram is really your visuals. Um, you really have to create your branding deck mm-hmm. that you create a one consistent type of design of message you want to send. And um, creating a brand filter is very important. Brand filter is, is, for example, the feeling that you want your image to project. For example, happiness. So every image has to reflect that feeling. So it's called brand filter. So make sure that like everything that comes out is related to that. 
and it has to be very aesthetically pleasing because people have become so good on Instagram, even kids, that amateur things don't work anymore. A bad quality picture doesn't work anymore. It has to be really high quality, well-produced image that captures the attention and the caption has to be playful, cheerful, witty. You have to ask a question or something that will lead to interaction. And of course the hashtags use as like Gary Vaynerchuk says that use as many as you can, 30 yet, if I'm not mistaken, um, hashtags in your post. Um, and you have to be consistent. There has to be a cadence post once or twice a day. Um, and stories is the game changer um, because it's a people kind of stop using the feed, uh, at least not as intensely as before. Now stories have changed everything and they have to be as entertaining as possible. You have to make sure people keep continuing watching your story, um, that they don't swipe it, that every piece of content has to have a different seat. There has to be a different type of value provided. It has to be consistent message. So a lot is happening on Instagram right now. Thanks, Maria, for the Instagram tips. I, I truly believe that um, stories is the main uh, play. And I see that you do a lot of Instagram lives, which I think uh, gets a lot of traction and engagement as well. And I do encourage many brands to go there and do Instagram lives. So um, I think uh, that's all we have for today. And uh, when you uh, will catch up again and when you have more uh, insights on marketing to us. Sure. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks, Maria.